warm welcome back. Why did I almost say what's crack a lacking? What year is this? It's me, your girl Cassie. I'm trying something new with my hair. I don't know how I feel about it yet. So you might watch this whole video and go, her hair looks terrible and I might know. So welcome back to my channel, everybody. No, it's been a little bit. This month, um, for lack of a better word, has been insane. You know everything that's happening. Everyone knows everything that's happening. But I just want to put a little pin in it and uh, say Black Lives Matter. It is not a political issue. It's an issue of human interest. And I will be including links in the description about places to donate or petitions to sign and uh, free ways to help out. So check that out. Anyway, since there's so much crazy in the world, I wanted to do something a little bit lighter today. I have a video about my beta reader process. Did this bitch die? I have a video about my beta reader process planned and that'll be the next thing that I do. But for now, I wanted to come back with a little, with a little pep in your step. I wanted to do something fun. So that's what we're going to do today. If you've been living under a rock, you might not know just how popular uh, tier lists are right now, but holy moly, they're everywhere. People are making tier lists about everything, whether it's YouTubers, Twilight characters, um, uh, 17th century musicians. I don't know if that last one exists, but I bet it does. And the video I'm about to make probably already exists, but you know what? I don't care. So today we're going to do a tier list ranking of tropes in fiction. Uh, it's across all genres, all age groups. I just threw together a bunch of tropes that I have feelings on. Uh, there it is, the first, the first uh, dial-up signal of the video. <laughs> it's a bunch of tropes that I have feelings on. You might not, and that's fine. You might feel the opposite, and that's fine. Because this is just for funsies, and if you try to attack me, then, like, get a life. <laughs> let's just dive in to the big meaty claws of the video, and let's talk about my tears. So, obviously, this couldn't be a tier list that I made if the tears themselves weren't Vine references. If you know me, I reference Vine too much, so obviously I had to bring that into this. So our bottom tier is <laughs> These are going to be tropes that I don't care for at all, that whenever I see, I'm immediately like, oh my god. And for the most part, they are not tropes that I feel like there's anything good about, because you know, there, there are some things that for the most part you don't like, but when they're done well, you're, you can appreciate it. For the most part, these are not those. We got the tier above it, which is step the fuck up, Kyle. STEP THE FUCK UP, KYLE! These are ones that suck a lot, for the most part. But then there are some, like, little nuggets of gold that you can find when you use these tropes. The third tier is, careful children, that's a lot of sodium. Be careful children, that's a lot of sodium. And that one is tropes that they have a lot of redeeming qualities, but, you know, they're just okay. Sometimes they're really good and sometimes they're really bad, which is why it's in the middle. The second highest one is Country Boy, I Love You. Wow. Country Boy, I Love You. Wow. <laughs> Did you like my reenactment? I had to. So that one is ones that I just love through and through. They're great. Yeah but they aren't as good as the top one. And the top one is, ah, shut up, yes. Ah, yes. So what that means is they are things that I could talk about all day if I wanted to, uh, but people will probably tell me to shut up and I'm like, okay, you're right, but they are just the, cream of the crop, the tropes that I very often enjoy. Let's just, 
dive into it, shall we? Our first trope is black and white morality, which essentially means the good people are good and the bad people are bad. You don't have anybody who's in between. Like for instance, Finn from the new Star Wars films, you know, he started out on the bad side in as a stormtrooper because that's the situation that he was brought up in, but then he becomes a good guy. Uh, in black and white morality, that does not happen. If you are on the bad side, you're on the bad side. If you're on the good side, you're on the good side, and that's it. This is not a trope that I'm fond of, um, just because I like those people who got those those spicy, you know, oh my god, what are they doing? They're bad, but they're good, or they're good, but then they make some bad decisions. Um, so I think I'm going to put that in. Wow, starting off negative. Crazy. Our next trope is the country boy who teaches the city girl how to let loose or love. I have mixed feelings. So I am fully aware how stupid it is and like how kind of outdated it is, but boy, there is something, there is something about it that those movies I, or books or whatever, like I still get like a kick out of it. I think it's because they argue a lot and I like banter, but a lot of the time it's kind of done in a misogynistic way. I. I can't decide if it's gonna go in careful children or step the fuck up. Okay, I'm gonna put it in careful children, that's a lot of sodium. So, thank you. Enemies to lovers, bada bing bada boom, we got our first oh yes one. Wait, I think I changed my mind, I think it's going in country boy. Okay, and the reason why I'm putting it in country boy instead of um, oh shut up, yes, is because sometimes in fiction, the enemies to lovers trope is done in a like borderline or completely abusive fashion. Sometimes that trope can be done in a way that's like abusive or toxic in, as opposed to them like slowly growing to like each other and love each other. Um, so that's why it's going in crunchy boy I love you. Our next trope is insta love. Goodbye. Gizzit. That's it. I don't care for it. I want to see them grow. I don't want to see them look at each other and go, wow, that's a... I bet he has a big penis. <laughs> Redeemed villain. Whoo. Okay. <laughs> all these... all these sounds. Okay. I think I'm putting redeemed villain in ooh, shut up, yes. This is because of my reading experiences with redeemed villains. The stories that I have read, slash movies I've watched, shows I've watched, that have had redeemed villains, I have liked, for the most part. And I just, I just love, oof. okay, just like everyone else right now, I'm watching Avatar. Shocker! And who comes to mind immediately? Prince Zuko. That character arc is incredible. To see him just completely woo woo woo. Good description, huh? I, wh why am I why am I a writer? I write. I mean, who would have thought? The path that he goes on to become a better person is just is just done really well, especially for a children's show. Like, what the hell? It's incredible, um, and that's just so satisfying to me when it's done right. So it's going to ooh, yeah. yes. We got our first top tier trope. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> so the next trope is found family. And that one, I don't have to think much about. It's going in country boy because it's one that I enjoy. It's nice, but it's not one that I sit around like, like screaming about to my friends. Like it's, it's nice. It's a good one. I enjoy it. And it's usually not done in a problematic way. So that makes me happy. <sighs> cool. I have a drinking problem. Does anybody get that reference? That was a reference to airplane. <laughs> Our next trope is going straight in the garbage. It's romanticizing mental illness. That pisses me off. <laughs> I don't think I have to explain it anymore. It pisses me off. End of story. Goodbye. Retellings. Uh, there's nothing inherently bad about retellings, but I just don't usually care for them. I'm kind of like, some people do really change retellings around, and that's cool, but, nah, I don't care. It's not a bad trope. Retellings are not bad. 
Um, what would be a good example of that? This is a bad example, but I'll say it. Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. But sometimes retellings can be done in a great way, and that's so fun. But for the most part, I just personally don't really care for retellings, which is why it's going, step the fuck up, Kyle. Doesn't mean they're bad. Does that mean you should go in Careful Children? No. I'm sticking with my guns. It's going in, step the fuck up, Kyle. I just realized I'm gonna have a lot of negatives. Oh no. Next trope. Gay best friend is gay. That's negative, immediately. I didn't even explain it, I just put it in and looked at the camera and was like... Okay, so what the gay best friend is gay trope, I don't know if there's a better name for it. There probably is, but that's what I put down in the thing. But with that trope, he's just the gay best friend, and he's just there to hype up the the main character. And like, that's his whole personality. Like, he, you don't know anything else about him. He's just gay best friend is gay. If you're gonna have a gay best friend, great. Give them a personality. Our next one is creepy children. That's another one that just like, meh, meh. I don't like care about. So I'm putting it in step the fuck up, Kyle. I guess my problem with it is that it's so overdone at this point that I'm like, oh my God, wow, a child is scary in this weird town or this weird house or this weird hotel. Who would have expected that this weird thing would happen with this weird child? Dang, are all of my tropes gonna be negative? Oh no. The next trope is you are the key. Oh, wow. So crazy. Oh my god. Which is normally a fantasy trope, could be in sci-fi. It's where someone is going on this journey or whatever and they're trying to save the world or something and they just don't know how to do it and then they meet some guru or they like read some document and then they're like oh, it's me i'm the one who can save the world um it's not inherently bad there's nothing inherently wrong with it it's just stupid <laughs> um i didn't put it on this list but it's a lot of the time paired with the chosen one trope which, personally, I don't mind it. I don't mind the chosen one trope. As long as it's done well, which does, the case with anything. But it normally goes hand in hand with chosen one. And for me, when you have the you are the key with the chosen one, that just brings chosen one down like 10 pegs. Our next trope is the villain is evil because they're evil. Ah, shut, step, step the fuck up, Kyle. Again, this is another trope that isn't inherently bad, but I just feel like it's poor storytelling. Give your villain a little more depth. Even if it's one of those cheesy things with, my mother was murdered by this thing, it just gives the villain a little more dimension. This can go hand in hand with the villain is evil because they like it, which... I personally don't think is as bad as this one because then that gives the villain just a little more personality. But that being said, if you're using that trope, just still give that villain some motivation other than, I like to stab people. This is usually the same trope where people tell the hero, oh, he's really bad. He's really, really bad. Don't, don't mess with him. That's, he's so bad. We, we're all so afraid of him. And and the hero's just like, oh man, whoa, dang, he must be like really bad. And everyone's like, yes, he absolutely is so bad. But they don't really give context for it. So just give me context. So our next one is love triangles. <sighs> you know, I'm putting this in careful children, that's a lot of sodium. And part of the reason why I'm doing this is because of my youth. We all read Twilight. If you watched my last video, you know my feelings on Twilight. I don't mind them, but I have more positive feelings about love triangles than about the things that are in Step the Fuck Up, Kyle, which is why it's going in Careful Children, because it's like, you could do a love triangle well, but you need to be careful. Our next one is the bad boy slash edgelord is the love interest. So, uh, okay, it's going in... The reason why is because ever since I was a kid, I've been drawn to those bad boy types. Not in real life though, at all. So, you know, bad boys often have like a lot of baggage and they're annoying and... <laughs> <laughs> 
this is this is so bad. The bad boys in stories often have a lot of baggage, and they are like really closed off. And you try to talk to them, and they're like, eh, eh, eh. and that makes for a more interesting like story itself. But uh, like real life, ugh. Bad boys are dramatic, not always, but a lot of the time they're dramatic, and that makes for fun stories, fun romance. Oh, that's like a guilty pleasure kind of, the bad boys. You don't know you're beautiful. That's what this trope is, I wasn't just singing it. This is the one where the girl is like, I'm not pretty at all, I just have like flawless hair and beautiful eyes and my skin is, is free of blemishes and I have nice clothing and everyone likes me, but I am ugly. I'm putting this one in step the fuck up, Kyle, just because Again, it's not inherently the worst, it's just so stupid. <laughs> we have another auto-reject. This is token person of character. Put more people of color in your book. And what's often a problem with this trope is that they're kind of stereotypical and that's just very harmful. I think a lot of white people struggle with writing people of color because they're like, they're so focused on, well, not not previously, but currently, currently, this is now a tangent, but currently a lot of white people are afraid to write a person of color wrong. So then they're like, they would just rather not do it. Just write them like a person. And that's it. Write them like a person and then get a sensitivity reader to make sure that you wrote them like a person correctly. It's pretty, pretty simple. World's pretty diverse out there. So put some people of color and some queer people in your novel. This is a huge tangent now. I'm sorry. I just mean write, write people of color like they're people. <laughs> Our next trope is the evil best friend, <sighs> which I think I'm going to put in country boy. I love you. This is, a trope that is often used as like a grand reveal at the end and and it's upsetting to the main character. So the evil best friend is just, it's good. Good, good talk, good talk. I just think the evil best friend works well a lot of the time. It's a nice, even though, even though it's a little bit cliche at this point, it's just a good way to fuck up your main character, and that's that's what we look for in fiction, isn't it? <laughs> so the next one is Small Town and Small Town Secrets. This is one that I like. I like this one a lot. Um, I think because I've always been kind of fascinated with small towns since I never grew up in that small town where everybody knows everybody. Um, I just grew up in like a normal person suburb, so small towns are just kind of interesting to me. But I think it's going in Country Boy because it's not something that I'll, you know, talk someone's ear off about. Our next one is Secret Romance Through the Mountains. Secret, 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 secret romance. I think. Woo, I can't decide if it if it's gonna go in Oh Yes or if it's gonna go in Country Boy. I'm gonna put it in oh yes. <laughs> it was a shocker to me, everybody, so hang, hang on tight. <laughs> Secret romances are so fun to me. Um, it's just, you know, making out in closets and, <laughs> and, and having to hide from people and like what if they're in another relationship that they're like, a, like an arranged marriage or something that's normally in like a period thing, but you know. What if they're not supposed to be together for some reason? That's fun. It's fun. We love it. And our final trope is the reluctant hero. This is the character who is reluctant to be a hero. Wow. <laughs> this is the character who, you know, oftentimes has their fate thrust upon them and they have to navigate being the chosen one or, you know, saving a town or whatever. And it is one that I enjoy, but it's not one that I'm like super excited about. 
So it's going to go in careful children. That's a lot of sodium. It can be done really well, and we can see, you know, the character struggling with this fate that they have taken on, and that's really nice. But it can also just be the character being like, I don't wanna, and that's annoying. So that's that. So this is my final tier ranking. Yay! I see our bottom tiers have the most things in them. Oops. I didn't realize that I uh, had so many things I did not care for. <laughs> so let me know what you think about my tier ranking. Are you super angry at me? Are you going to unsubscribe? <laughs> Or do you agree with me? Let me know if you want me to do any more of these types of videos because they're fun. I enjoy talking about things I like and don't like. That's why I have a YouTube channel. If you're curious, oh my Fitbit. If you're curious about how my beta reading process is going to change, then wait for my next video, babies. That, that'll be coming in a time. I hope you're doing well. I hope everyone is safe. And I hope you're taking care of yourself because in these weird times, take a shot, hmm, unprecedented times, hmm. But it's very important to be taking care of your mental health when you can't see people as much as you used to and all of that. So that's that. Okay. See, see you later, alligator. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>